Target acquired. Target acquired. Target acquired. Target acquired. Target acquired. Oh, where'd he go? There he is. Okay, so here we have a simplified sketch of our um, of our project. We've got two major, com three major components. We've got our pan tilt and our camera. We've got a microprocessor, our nano, to control the pan and tilt on digital pins two and three. We've got USB communication between the nano and our processing sketch that's going to be running on our host and that host is going to manage the display as well as all of the processing tasks that are involved in doing the face recognition um, sending data out of the serial um, across the serial connection to the nano as well as reading video from the camera oh yeah that's one thing that i haven't got on this diagram we also need a USB connection to our video camera. So there is a USB connection to the Nano, and there's also a USB connection to the camera to read the video signal. So that's the basic <clears throat> um, outline of our, of our setup. Um, I'll go into powering all of the different things later. That's a separate thing. But now let's take a look at what our Nano sketch needs to do. It really has two basic functions. It needs to read serial data. And that serial data is going to consist of a very simple protocol. It sends a character across the wire to, um, to determine which, um, which um, axis we're going to control. So that's going to be either a zero or a one for the pan and tilt or whatever. And then it's going to um, read data from the serial port to get the angle, angular position. So then it's going to read another pair of values. A char for the axis, it's going to be a zero, or, well, it's going to be a one in the second case. And then it's going to read angular position of the, um, the other axis. So we'll send a zero first, and then we'll send a one second. So one angular position, or zero angular position, one angular position. And that's we have to take care of that. That's one block of code that we have to manage. The other block of code is pretty simple. It's right to our various axis. Our pan axis, the value, and right to the tilt axis, our value. Pretty simple. This guy doesn't have to do very much. This guy, on the other hand, has a few tasks that it needs to do. It needs to manage writing all of these. So a cor corresponding to that block there is going to be a, um, a write data. OK, we're going to have to manage the writing data to um, our, our out the serial port. So that's what the serial um, library in processing is enables us to do. So we write data. So that's writing the char axis, the angular position, the axis, and then the angular position. So that's one chunk that we have to manage. The other chunk that we have to manage is um, reading video frames. Um, and taking those video frames and analyzing them for faces and get faces. Once we've got a face, or a, an array of faces, act
So this is the difference between a, a good adapter and a cheap, crappy adapter. All right, so first of all, it doesn't even provide five volts under load. Um, it's only giving you four and a half volts, and the phone is trying to draw uh, more and more current, but it gets to a limit where it can only draw about 350 milliamps, or even less. But it still can't get four, it can't even get five um, volts out of this thing when it's drawing 300 amps. The, the, the label says that it's supposed to be able to deliver an amp, but clearly, clearly it can't, not at five volts. So <clears throat> let's see what happens when we plug it into a real adapter. Uh, okay. There we go. Right away we get our five and a, five plus volts, and you can see the phone is trying to pull more and more current until it can figure out how much the adapter is willing to provide or able to provide consistently and still give you power up to a certain maximum. And then <clears throat> it went to zero, so it reset itself. The um, circuitry inside the phone reset itself, and now it's drawing a 900 milliamps at uh, 5.3 uh, volts. So the difference between a cheap piece of crap that will... Uh, I don't know. Let's see what's inside it. Why would I ever have used this? I don't know. Because I'm frugal. Yeah. Let's call it that. Frugal. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, well, first of all, that's that's how they connect to mains voltage with um, just a, a couple of solder tabs onto these pins. And these pins, you could probably just pull out if you, you know, if you weren't even trying hard. Like, you can, you can already see that they're wiggly pieces of junk. <clears throat> as far as this little joker is concerned, there's no control circuitry. It's just relying on line voltage, um, the frequency of your um, AC line to do the boosting of, or do, do the uh, conversion. At least there is a reasonable amount of separation between your some of your high voltage and your low voltage because you know there's your optical isolator right there and then your transformer so there's a reasonable amount of separation between high voltage and low voltage but it clearly is incapable of producing the rated one rated <laughs> yeah like i ever thought that was realistic um uh rated voltage so yeah. Crap. Crap. Okay, so where were we when the uh, power went out there? Oh, yeah. Um, getting faces. So basically, um, the processing, um, or the OpenCV has, has a uh, library, uh, in the uh, module in there that does face recognition. And what it does is it returns an array of um, rectangles that enclose what it's detected as a face. So there's going to be uh, something called uh, that we're going to call rectangles. And it's going to be an array. And that array is going to um, contain um, tuples, um, four tuples, in fact, that have the um, upper X and upper corner Y coordinates, and then the width and, uh, sorry, height and then width, width and height. I forget in somewhere in anyways, the upper left-hand corner of a rectangle here. So that coordinate plus the width and the height. So that's what rectangle stores. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at that rectangle and figure out where it is in the full frame of the video and then pan and tilt in order to bring that rectangle into the center of the frame. Simple. That's what that's all that the code has to do for center. No. Then once we've got the coordinates of the um, the rectangle, then if if it's if it's not so, here's how that's going to work. If it's too high, 
will pan or sorry tilt it in an appropriate orientation too high or too low we either tilt forward tilt backwards and if it's to the left or to the right we pan left and right in order to bring that rectangle into the center of the frame we'll define a little null zone in the center of our frame so that as long as we've got the center of the rectangle somewhere in our null zone in the center then we're going to call that a, um, a good enough so that way we don't have a, a lot of jittering uh, moving it for really no um, no purpose so as long as the center of our rectangle is in this null zone we're going to say that call it good the other thing that we're going to do is we're not going to pan and tilt beyond reasonable limits on our servo. So we're going to stop at, um, we're going to actually limit the range of our servo between 5 and 175 degrees. And um, yeah, that is the basis of the, and that is the basis of the OpenCV um, processing sketch that that we use. Now, so this USB is going into the video module. So, let's take a look at the hardware. So, these servos um, are oriented so that zero degrees is down here and 180 degrees is over here. So when I send, uh, move the servo to zero, it moves the arm over here, and when I move the arm to 90, it's here, and when I move it to 180, it's over here. So that becomes important for knowing which direction you're going to tilt the uh, servo in order to move the rectangle that contains your face down in the captured frame or up in the captured frame. Similarly, here's 90 degrees on this guy. Um, I think zero is over here and 180 is, no, zero is over here and 180 is over, yes, zero is over here and 180 is over here, this is 90, and similarly, you need to know which direction to turn it in order to move the face rectangle closer to the center of the video frame. You can do that by em empirical twiddling, or you can actually, you know, think it out. And that's, uh... That's basically the mechanics. We've got that connected up to our um, our Nano. This is um, a power rail that we're using to power the servos because they require a fair amount of current. I was reading, on, I think, on the data sheets that these guys require up to 600 milliamps of current. I certainly believe that. So yeah, they can draw a lot of current, probably up, upwards of an amp, the, the two of them together. Um, so we've got this connected to our bench supply. I'm going to give that into our 5 volt, uh, five volt uh, 3 amp supply. And that is what's powering our, our servos. So the next thing that we need to be doing is actually connecting that guy up the video camera up to video and then we'll run our processing sketch then we'll run our processing sketch and watch as it follows the guy around Oh, where'd he go? There he is. So now, let's see if we can get um, a, a little walkthrough of the code that we're going that we're using to make this happen. So to begin with, what we're going to do is we're going to run through the um, code that controls the servos and reads the data from our processing sketch. 
So this just comes straight off of that Sparkfern website. Um, so we load up Servo, the Servo library. We uh, define a couple of variables to hold the Servo IDs. We define our two ser servos, our tilt servo and our pan servo. And then we also define a variable to store characters that are coming in from the serial port. So our setup involves initializing our servos and then opening up our serial port. So pins two and three are going to be our tilt pin and our pan pin. And then we're going to initialize our servos by putting them in the mid position, the 90 degree position. Now you can play with these to figure out whether larger angles move it from right to left or left to right, or whether larger angles tilt it up or tilt it down. And that's how you determine which direction you need to increment your counters in our processing sketch, but we'll get to that. So you can play with these just to figure out which direction your, your, your camera moves depending on which angle you um, are feeding into it. How does the actual code work? pretty straightforward. If you've got characters to be read on the serial port, read one. And if it's for the tilt channel, the next collection of characters until the next new line is going to be written directly to your tilt servo. So whatever comes in on the serial port between the next um, new line is going to go directly to our tilt servo. But if that character that we read at first was actually a um, pan channel signal, then we read the next line of data and write it to our pan servo. The indenting on this is horrible, horrible, horrible. Now, let's go move over to the processing code and see how that stuff works. Okay, so now we've got our processing sketch up here and in order to get this thing working here's what I needed to do. We first of all make sure that we've got the libraries that we need so OpenCV needs to be um, checked. All you need is the uh, processing library for video, the processing library for serial ports, and then you need this Java AWT in order to draw rectangles on your screen. In order to get video working, though, on my Ubuntu um, installation, I had to do some messing around with installing um, GStreamer to get the proper codecs for coding and decoding the um, video stream, and that was a little bit of a pain in the butt, and I'll, there, there's no um, smooth installer right now for Ubuntu um, 1604 that I could find, but if you, um, I'll, I'll put a link in the description to some to uh, some uh, some commands that you can use to install all of the various dependencies that you need. In any event, once you've got your environment set up, you initialize a capture object using the video library. You initialize an OpenCV object utilizing your OpenCV library, and you open up a serial object using your serial library. I'm gonna, I have some debugging stuff in here for when I was futzing around. Um, we are going to define some uh, variables to keep track of the current servo positions. We're gonna define our pan and tilt channels. We are going to define a couple of other things. The middle of the face in the y-axis and the middle of the face in the x-axis. Remember the um, the let's go down here the faces is is a array that is coming from the OpenCV detect. So the detect um, method in OpenCV will create an array of faces and that array of faces has um, uh, four parameters for each of its uh, each of the entries in that array. So you've got your x coordinate, your y coordinate, which is the upper left hand corner of the rectangle, and then you've got the width and the height of your rectangle that encloses what processing sees as a face. So a few things to keep in mind here. We also want to cap, cap, uh, take a note of what the middle of the screen 
is, what the uh, middle of the x coordinate of the screen is, so it's the height of the screen, divided by 2, width divided by 2, and then we want to define a um, null spot in the middle of the screen, and we're going to make this 20 pixels wide, and you'll see that that 10 leads to 20 in a, in a bit. You can also change the step size, so it can move quicker. The you can servo can, could possibly move quicker. One degree at a time seems to work fine. Now, our setup. First of all, we create the size of our output window. That's going to be 320 by 240. We um, now initialize the mid-screen values to what they actually are based on our window size here. So. Our video object is going to be a capture and it's going to have 320 by 240 um, resolution. We're also going to make an OpenCV object that is going to have a capture of 320 by uh, 240 and then we're going to load Cascade. To begin with, you might need to use this line here in order to figure out what COM port to use. Um, using, the, um, using the Nano, uh, it lives on serial port USB 1, but um, when you're using uh, an Arduino like an Uno, it comes up with um, ASCM 0, so it comes up first in the list, and so this is uh, serial 0 which is what it is by default coming off the website, is, um, is what you need. Oh, 96, I didn't change this. 115.2. So that's going to be our baud rate for communicating with our nano. Our, and then we're going to initialize our tilt and pan. And this is how we do it. So we write characters to a port. The tilt channel so we send the tilt then we write characters to the port so this is going to uh, out the port so what this is going to do is going to take whatever is in this variable and it's going to write it out to the port and then it's going to wait um, our arduino code is going to read whatever came out of there until the new line and then it's going to then that um, that write buffer is emptied and it'll go on the write buffer then is filled up with this, and then the Arduino reads it, or the Nano reads it, and um, empties the read buffer, and we go on to the next line. Pan channel gets written, servo pan position gets written. And remember, I initialized these with 90 degrees to start them out. Then we start up our video. So that is, um, that will look for a video camera. It turns out that the video camera does sit on TTYS0, so the, uh, we don't have to define a port for the video. Now, in Arduinos, you have the, um, the, you have your setup, and then you have your loop. In processing, that loop is called draw, because it's about creating output, and so they call the main loop draw. That's all you need to know. So, first of all, we're going to load um, load image into OpenCV for processing. We're going to take whatever the current video frame is. The image, uh, where, where are we going to get the images? We're going to get them from video. What's the image? This is our video image that we're going to take. We create a rectangle. Uh, sorry, we define some uh, some constants for when we're drawing our rectangles, the stroke and the stroke weight. We um, create, uh, we fill up an array of faces from our OpenCV detect uh, method, and we loop through that array of faces, and we draw a rectangle on our output for each of those faces that we find. It's interesting to note that it will o we're only going to be concerned with the first face in the frame. So <clears throat> if there are multiple faces in the frame, that is going to cause some possibly cause some grief. If this 
function here, uh, where am I? Uh, OpenTV.detect. If it always assigned the same array position to each of the faces that it detected, like if it could keep um, state between its calls, then we would be fine with just tracking the first face. The first face it finds is the ones it's going to track. Turns out that this will not necessarily assign faces in the same order when they're detected. So if you have multiple faces in your, your scene, it is going to get confused unless you find some more sophisticated code to work around that. And maybe that's a exercise. Now, if a face is found, find the midpoint of the first face in the frame. So this is face zero, faces zero. So the midpoint is going to be the upper left hand corner y coordinate plus half of the height. And then our midpoint of the of the face is going to, in the x direction is going to be the upper left hand corner of the um, the face rectangle plus the width divided by two. Straightforward. Now if your midpoint of your face in the y coordinate is bigger than the mid screen plus the mid-screen window. So if you're above, actually maybe this should be minus. Uh, if you're above the mid-screen point, then your face, is, oh sorry, yeah, no, this is correct. If you're in the bottom half of the screen, or more than the bottom, uh, the bottom half of the screen plus your mid-screen window, so this is this extra 10 um, uh, pixels, that you are down, then the face is too low. You're going to have to tilt down in order to move the face closer to the center. And this is where you have to figure out whether or not you're going plus or minus for the step size. If you're tilting down means you're getting um, larger angles, then it's plus step size. And if tilting down means smaller angles, then it's minus step size because you want to increment your tilt position accordingly. Also, don't adjust the pan position if it's smaller than 5. So if you're down at the bottom already, don't try and go any lower. Just give up. Now, if your mid-face is smaller than mid-screen minus the mid-screen window, so you're above that halfway point. Remember, coordinates in processing are upper left-hand corner. So 0, 0, the origin of the, of the rectangle is up here somewhere. And so if you're your mid face X is up in here somewhere. It's going to be ha in the lower half of the uh, pixel count. And if it's down in the lower half, it's going to be in the higher side of the pixel count. Face is too high, tilt up. So here we go. We're subtracting step size because of the way I've got my um, encoders created. We have to tilt up in order to bring the face into the correct position. And if we're too high, don't do anything, but if we can, try and move it into position. Then the same sort of story holds with our um, with our X component here, and we just make sure whether we're on the left or on the right, and if we're on the left, which direction do we have to move? If we're on the right, which direction we have to move? So now that we've calculated all of that, then we can write to our tilt channel, our tilt position, and our pan channel, our pan position, and Bob's your uncle. So this is a capture event and what happens here is this gets called every time there's a, uh, a frame to be read from the capture object up here. And yeah, that's how that works. So what can we do to extend this? Well, we can, we can make the, uh, we can try and figure out a better way of managing which face we're actually tracking. Perhaps we um, sort our face rectangles into the largest to the smallest, and we pick the face that's largest in the frame and track that. Um, and that might work. I don't know exactly how we might change. Well, that might work. I have to think through it a bit. But there's some stuff like that to be done. And then, of course, once we've got all of this um, this face tracking down, that means we can start using um, weaponry on top of our our 
our little sentry gun here and start shooting nerf darts at whatever we find. Anyways, uh, that is the quick walkthrough. And um, again, uh, thanks for watching. It's been a blast.